So, here we have our protagonist, Jim, who has been sent on a mission to climb a particular mountain in order to repair a communications station that is not working. In order to reach the top of that mountain, he's going to have to go through an acrid nest, and that will allow us to showcase one of our new acrid types. Now you can see it here, bursting through the spawner. This is a fire wasp, which is one of our flying acrid types. And that means that it will not only buzz around you and try to attack you at close range, it also has a long range attack. Jim is going into cover here in order to protect against some of those long range attacks and defeat the fire wasps here. Now he's throwing a grenade at the spawner and we'll follow that up with some gunfire here in order to take it out and that will allow him to move into the next area. Now we have Jim entering the main portion of the fire wasp nest and uh, he's going to have to continue taking out the fire wasp. One of them has grabbed him here. This is another example of what we call the struggle mode, which is present with all of these smaller acrid types. And what we really wanted to do here was present something that was not a typical QTE. You will have to bash buttons a little bit, but afterwards, as you can see here, you're actually going to have to aim that reticle. And when it turns red, Jim will attack, and that will help you finish off the enemy. Now we've jumped a section here to the top of the mountain, and Jim is going to get to the bottom of why this satellite dish has stopped functioning. And we can see here in the distance that there's a mysterious figure that appeared to have been fiddling with the station. What the hell? And that is quite a mystery here for Jim. Now he's going to go here and repair, and while he does that, he's going to radio his boss and try to figure out what exactly was going on here. Cronus Actual, this is Peyton. Listen, I don't know how else to say this, but I think we might have a saboteur on the base. Saboteur? Jim, no offense. You're not supposed to go stir-crazy until you've been here at least a year. I'm serious, boss. Somebody was out here. All right, Jim, I believe you. First things first, head into the relay station, raise the satellite dish, and call up the tram. So as we can see, there's something not quite right about the situation, but Jim's got to focus on his mission. He's now pulled the lever that is going to put this communication station back into operation, and we get a nice, cool reveal here of the main portion of the satellite dish. Calm dish locked and ready for transmission. Now that he has restored functionality to the communication station, Jim is going to have to call up his utility rig that he's left at the bottom of the mountain using the built-in gondola system that he's repaired along the way. And this will call his rig up to him so that he'll be able to use it to make some final adjustments, make sure that the base is able to communicate with Earth. So as we can see here, he's operating the gondola system. And that will call the utility rig back up from the mountain. And all he has to do is wait for it to arrive to complete his mission. Cronus, actually, you copy? I've got the satellite dish working. Just waiting for the rig to come up. However, uh, looks like someone's not too happy having the visitors here at the top of the mountain. This is another one of our new acrid types that we're showing off here in the video. And this is the spitter, which is a Cat L, large size acrid. As you can see, it's sort of scorpion-like. And this is actually going to be one of the larger acrid types in the game. Not the biggest by far, but certainly one of the larger types. And it's going to be quite difficult for Jim to defeat on foot. It's basically a boss encounter. As you can see, you have to roll, you have to dodge in order to avoid its attacks from its tail. And it also spits venom at Jim as well. So what Jim is really doing here is he's trying to damage it and uh, you know, really trying to stand up against it, but he knows that his rig is on its way up, and if he can get in his rig, it's gonna make this a much more even fight. And so uh, that's definitely what Jim is looking to try to do here. Now he's hit it enough times and done enough damage that the spitter is going to retreat to its cave. And that's actually good timing for us because it'll give us an opportunity to buy some time while the rig shows up. And we can see a little bit uh, there from the gondola apparatus the rig showing up here as we take out a few of these fire wasps and sure enough here is the rig that is shown up at the top of the mountain and now all Jim has to do is get in it and we're gonna try to finish off the spitter that we saw a few minutes ago 
Once again, when we jump into the rig in Lost Planet 3, we're back in first person. Okay. It's very important for us to sell the perspective and the scale of the rig. Uh, it is the largest vehicle we've ever had in the series. And here, Jim is going to use one of the upgrades that you get over the course of the game, which is called the winch. You start with the claw arm on the left side of the rig, and the winch allows you to basically shoot that out and it will kill smaller enemies with a single hit, as we can see with the Fire Wasps. And then you can also use it to latch on to larger enemies and, and draw them in. Now, we can see that the Spitter has shown back up. Looks like it's rested a little bit and is uh, wants to get back in the fight. So now we're gonna give it something its own size to take on. We can bash using the drill arm which will help, uh, and then grab on with the winch, as we mentioned earlier, and then we can pull in using the winch. And that will allow us to grab the tail, lift it up, and attack with the drill. Now, important thing to note here, it's hard to tell a little bit from the video, but when you're actually playing the game, all of these things are their own unique controls. So when you grab onto the tail, you've got to use the trigger to grab, you've got to use the stick to lift the tail up, you have to use the right trigger to drill, and you have to aim the drill. So it's not a situation where the game's doing everything for you. We really want you to feel as though you're personally in control of this large rig. Now we've taken the tail off, we've bashed it into submission a little bit, and uh, we're gonna try to come in here now to finish it off. So bash it, stun it a little bit, come in, grab with the left trigger, and then we're gonna use the drill here in order to finish it off which is quite a gory and satisfying way to kill the enemy. And there we go. Before we finish out the video here, just going to uh, play one of our cool cinematics here that's gonna show a little bit more of the background of some of the characters and also give some hints at some of the mysteries that Jim and the others are facing here on EDN3. Roman? Drop your weapon! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Easy now, Doc. Who are you? Where'd you come from? I'm Jim Payton. Just here to check Where out... Where from? Coronas! What the hell, lady? Where else would I be from? Braddock sent me. I know you. Right. I came down with that creepy fella you don't like, with the big head. Just hitching a ride, I swear. I barely know the guy. Maybe done aiming things at me now? Braddock sent you? I'm gonna make sure you're okay. See if you needed any help. <gasps> Touching concern after all these months. To what do I owe such an excess of caution? I might ask the same, Shotgun Sally. You've seen it then, haven't you? It? Someone in the distance, watching. Uh, hard to know what I saw. They say folks start to crack up out here in the white too long. Perhaps. Do you feel cracked? Can't say as I do. Then there's something the old man's not telling us. You realize that? I'm trying not to. I know how it is. You didn't come here to ask questions. But believe me, James, this place has secrets. Keep your eyes open, or they'll sneak up on you when you least expect it. It's no good now, I'm gonna stop. I'm just here to do a job. Huh, that's convenient. I've got one for you. 